In Georgia, it's not always the case. Now, you could do an entire series of shows on why in-state kids in the state of Georgia aren't hardwired. They don't have it in their DNA from birth to just go to the University of Georgia. I wrote down a couple of reasons. So this is what people, this is what we talk about back home. When someone asks that question, people say um, the family roots aren't as deep, which is a fancy way of saying it's a transient state especially the most populous areas. I'm from Columbus. It's a military town. A lot of folks in and out. Atlanta is obviously one of the biggest cities in the country. It's the biggest city in the Southeast for about a thousand miles. So a lot of people coming in and out. So you may have kids there that are juniors in high school that move there in seventh grade. Point being, they don't have deep roots in Georgia clay, the way that maybe LSU kids do, maybe the, maybe, uh, the way Alabama and Auburn kids do. Another reason that's thrown around is, and good luck explaining this, For whatever reason, there is not the state pride in the state of Georgia, in Georgia sports, Braves, Falcons, Georgia, etc. There is not that state pride that exists athletically, on average at least, that you may find in smaller states. Ironically, in states that don't have, in a lot of cases, pro sports. Good luck writing your senior thesis on what the reason for that is. I'll tell you this too. A lot of people say, for some reason, Georgia kids don't view it as cool to stay at home. You know, a lot of them think in order to be great, in order to do something truly great, for people to talk about you 50 years from now, you can't stay home, man. You got to leave home. And I'm telling you from being on the ground a long time, that mentality is true. It's there. I don't know how to explain it to you, but it is there. And it's not because you can't go to Georgia and win big. Obviously, you can go to Georgia and win big right now. But back to Andrew Ivan's feature, the Peach State scorecard here, Georgia just landed the number one class in the country. So if you're a casual recruiting fan, or maybe you even pay attention to it at a closer level, but not quite a granular level, you may think, well, Georgia, obviously, that's a very, very populous state. Obviously, they pump out a ton of talent. So obviously, if you got all that talent to choose from in state, you're going to be number one. Well, you're half true, because Georgia did just finish number one. How about this? Perception versus reality. Perceptions, probably, they dominate in state. How about this reality? I knew this, but I had to go back and look at the numbers Uh, to make sure that Andrew Ivins here was dead on the money. And believe it or not, he did fact check his work. So yes, he is dead on the money. Georgia had four five-star kids, composite five-star kids this last class. One was from the state of Georgia. That's not shocking, okay? Any given year, that kind of stuff can happen. Here's the shocking stat to me. Georgia signed 15 four-star recruits this past cycle. Two of them were from the state of Georgia. And one of those went to IMG in Florida. We're just counting him as being from the state of Georgia. Two out of 15. And the state of Georgia was loaded. Here's how loaded it was. LSU, Clemson, Alabama, Auburn, Tennessee, Mississippi State, North Carolina, Stanford, Georgia Tech. All these programs landed at least one blue chip kid from the state of Georgia. Everyone comes down here. Ohio State comes down here. Michigan, everybody comes down here to recruit. Georgia has yet to sign the number one player in the state of Georgia under Kirby Smart. As Andrew Ivins points out, and he is correct, that may be a little misleading because they got Nolan Smith, who was an IMG Academy kid, but he was he's a Georgia kid. And so having said that, Georgia right now is dominant recruiting. They don't dominate in state. I'm not saying they're not capable of dominating in state. There's a reason for this. Talking to some people close to the Georgia program and and really on the inside of Georgia recruiting, the thinking part A is it's too risky to put all your eggs in the Georgia basket in in a lot of cases because of the reasons that I pointed out to you a little while ago. You just don't know where the head is at for a kid from the state of Georgia in a lot of cases. So Kirby Smart thinks that, but also this makes perfect sense to me. He looks around and says, why in 2020... When I can be anywhere I want to in this country in four hours, five hours with, with aviation, why would I limit my recruiting approach to imaginary geographic lines on a map? Uh, can it, does anyone have a good rebuttal? I don't. I mean, it makes a lot of sense. So basically, Smart looks around and says, we're capable of recruiting nationally. We're going to recruit nationally. And we'd love to land kids in the state of Georgia. But I, I really think that he looks at it and says, I mean, if all things are equal, all things are equal. Now, if I got a kid who is a better option out of Statesboro, Georgia, than a kid from Manville, Texas, yeah, I want to go get the kid in Georgia. But I don't even think that Kirby Smart gives a whole lot of preference to the state of Georgia. I think he gives preference to kids who can win a championship. 
That's what I think he does. Now, I don't have any problem with that approach. A lot of you should be kind of happy that Georgia chooses to take this approach. I read you the list of programs that have landed in the past cycle, at least one blue chip kid from the state of Georgia. In the recruiting industry, there are two terms to describe recruiting in Georgia. You got the state of Georgia and you have the state of Atlanta. For recruiting purposes, a lot of people view Atlanta and the surrounding area. Let's call it an hour radius around Mercedes-Benz Stadium. A lot of people view that as its own state. I mean, that's obviously where a lot of the talent is. But a kid from Lowndes County and a kid from Fulton County, you're talking about two different kids. And so the upbringings are different. The roots are probably different. So you got to recruit them in a lot of cases different. There are two programs that I think have to pounce on this. South Carolina's one. Tennessee is another one. You draw, and I really want to hone in on Tennessee. Jeremy Pruitt at Tennessee, it's not optional. They have to have success in Georgia if they're going to beat Georgia, if they're going to be a player in the SEC East. And I happen to think that Tennessee, even though the in-state crop in the state of Tennessee is nothing to really write home about any given year, I don't view Tennessee as being in some disadvantaged position recruiting-wise. I draw a six-hour radius. I always like to do this, the six-hour radius, the six-hour bubble around any given spot on a map. And if I draw it around Knoxville, I get up into near the Tidewater area of Virginia. I got the Carolinas. I also am Jeremy Pruitt. So I trust that even though Mobile is not in my six hour radius, I can go down there and get kids. I've got North Alabama in there. I got all of North Georgia in there, including Atlanta. I get over into Nashville. I get up into Southern Ohio. You're telling me I can't land 25 kids per cycle that land me top five nationally? Of course you can, but you can't do it without Atlanta. You can't do it without the state of Georgia. I got to watch Tennessee very closely right now, this upcoming cycle. Once they get a product on the field to sell on the recruiting trail, and I think it's an ongoing effort. And when I say sell, I mean sell in the way that you can walk into my living room and convince me if I come to Tennessee instead of Georgia, I got both options and you want me to choose Tennessee, I can do that and reasonably see over the next four years us beating Georgia, us being the dominant player in the East. You can't sell kids on that right now. The ending to last season may have gotten you closer. It saved your job. It got you closer to being able to sell that. I'm not buying that yet. So it's an uphill battle, but it's a battle I think that they feel like they're equipped for. I would also watch South Carolina, like I said. Of course, you've got competition in-state uh, from Clemson, but listen, Clemson, uh, they figured this out a long time ago. Dominate in Florida enough? Dominate in Georgia enough? I mean, think about the kids that have come out of this state. We were mentioning Georgia not landing the number one player in the state. We're not talking about busts. Guys, we're talking about Trevor Lawrence. We're talking about um, Eric Gilbert this past year, the tight end slash wide receiver, just total freak of nature, who has not played a college down yet. I would stake a large amount of my net worth, which is into the hundreds now, Colin, that Eric Gilbert is going to be a star as a freshman. Forget sophomore, junior, as a freshman at LSU. Also, there was a kid named Derek Brown. And if you don't remember him, watch the NFL draft this coming spring. You won't have to wait too awful long to hear his name. The other program to watch, they're sitting top 10 nationally right now. I think they may be top five nationally. The University of North Carolina. Matt Brown's North Carolina Tar Heels. They flipped Drake May, the elite quarterback from Alabama. They are sitting top four, top five right now. And there is a lot of positive momentum. I think oh, momentum is overused in football and sports. But in recruiting, it very much is underused as a term. North Carolina's got some momentum right now. They've obviously got to do work in Atlanta and in the state of Georgia and the state of Atlanta, as they call it, too.